Welcome to Programming for Kids with Scratch 2. I'm Mike Lehman, and thanks for joining me. This series of half-hour shows uses Scratch to introduce computer programming to kids, about fifth grade and up, and curious adults, too. You'll learn all about programming in Scratch in this series. It covers loop blocks, repeat, repeat until and forever, decision blocks, including if and if else, procedure blocks, variables, lists, messages, events, clones, even microphone and video webcam input. I'll create many programs, including games, storytelling, drawing pictures, and programs that demonstrate important programming concepts, including objects, threads, and polling. This series is all about doing and shows the creation of all working programs from start to finish. Scratch is a great first programming language and can have children very quickly creating and presenting stories and creating fun animations, all while learning valuable critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, and the fundamentals of programming without any of the confusing and detailed syntax. Scratch presents programming commands as single blocks that are easily snapped together to make programs with very little typing. Don't let the ease of Scratch fool you into thinking that there's little here. Scratch programs can do a lot of things. Very little math is needed to make fun programs, and I give the very few equations that I'll use in a handful of about 50 challenges. Scratch is free and freely available from a highly regarded university, MIT. With your web browser, you can create, share, and save your Scratch programs if you want to. You can also look online at literally millions of shared Scratch programs, and if you like, you can join the Scratch community. You can just sit back and watch this show, or you can go to scratch.mit.edu, click on the Try It Out icon, and have fun learning how to program too. All of these video challenge lessons and more are available at my programmingforkids.info website and at my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. The countdown timer at the bottom of the screen shows how long until a program is first run. This show number 26 creates a program to tell stories with uploaded pictures and paging through the story's text and has an advanced challenge with recursion. I'll get started. In this challenge, I'll create an easy framework for telling a story, including imported backdrop images and story script costumes. I'll upload a couple backdrop images. My images are simple drawings I made on my computer and saved in PNG file format. They're 480 by 360, the size of Scratch's stage. Photos can be used too. I'll double click on Ocean Sunset and upload my other backdrop, Evening Above the Bay. I'll want costumes that'll be the text of the story Having the text as costumes will help me make smoother transitions between costume changes. More on that shortly. First I need some costumes, and I want the program to start by telling the reader to use the space key to advance through the story. I'll select the cat sprite and paint a new costume. Vector costumes can have smoother images, so I'll convert to vector. I'll want to make a text object and use the Gloria font. I'll put the text at the bottom. Press space to advance through the story. That looks good. Click again to make my second costume. Convert to vector. Text. This will be a long one. We enjoyed the last of the sunset. Then we started back to town, hoping we'd have enough light. Click outside, move it down a little bit, looks good. Make my third costume, convert to vector, text, this one's a little shorter. Heading down to the shore, we could see the lights below us. Looks good there. Fourth costume, vector, text. Now make your own story. Okay, move it down a little tiny bit and finished. I don't want the cat's costumes. Get rid of that one and this one. I have four costumes now. Four, three, two, and one. They're numbered two. Four, three, two, and one. Now I want to show each costume with the correct backdrop and use the spacebar to change through them. First, I'll advance through the costumes each time the spacebar is pressed. I'll go to Scripts, Looks, look at the costume number, check it, and move it down to the middle. 
I want to loop through the costumes, one, two, three, and four. I'll go to Control, Repeat Until. Go to Looks to switch the costume. I want the costume number plus one to go to the next costume. I'll get costume number, operators, and add one to it. That'll work. Now it'll switch to the next costume. But when should the loop stop? When costume number is four, or when it's greater than four? I want to end with the last costume showing, so I went when costume number equals four. I'll get equals four. I'll start with the first costume, duplicate. Don't need this. The first costume is costume three. Need to repeat until costume number is four. When this starts, it selects the first costume, switches, switches, and keeps switching until costume number is equal to four. I'd like to run this, but I won't see all the costume changes. It'll run too quickly. I'll add waiting for the space bar, wait until, go to sensing, key space pressed, and I want to run all of this, events, when a green flag is clicked. Now when a green flag is clicked, first costume selected, until costume number is four, waits for a space, advances to the next costume. I'll run it and press the space bar and went all the way through. Well, that was strange. The loop is so fast that it switches the costume and comes back to wait and sees the key is still pressed so it keeps looping and looping. I'm going to add a smoother transition between costume changes that'll take time, so I'll add a single timed wait for now. I'll run it now. Press the space. Second, space, third, space, last one. The program's finished running, the flag's a dark green, and there's no glow around the blocks. When the costume's changed, the text costume to quickly and smoothly fade away, then have the new text costume fade in. I'll go to looks, change effect. I'll use ghost effect. When I run this block, watch the text costume fade some. Click on it, it faded. That's 25, again, is 50, again, 75, again, 100, and it's gone. The change of 100 went from visible to invisible. I'll make it visible again like when it started. I'll get set effect, ghost. I'll run it. At zero, the ghost effect is completely visible, so 100 is invisible, as I showed in an earlier challenge. I want my program to do this fade out over one second. I'll go to Control, Repeat. I want the text to fade smoothly, so I'll make a bunch of small changes. Instead of 25, it'll be 5. That'll have to change 20 times to get up to 100. 5 times 20 is 100. So I'll change the loop to 20. And I'll start at 0. Now the effect starts at 0, and for 20 times, the ghost effect is changed by 5 till it gets to 100. But this will be too fast. I'll get a wait. I want this loop to take one second, not 20 seconds. I need to wait a 20th of a second, 0 0.05. It's okay if you don't understand that, you can try this instead. Get divide, one wait one twentieth. Scratch will compute the value. It's a calculator too. I'll run this too. Watch the text smoothly fade out. Click on it, fading and gone. I'll make a procedure block. Make a block, call it Fade Out Costume. Okay, I'll attach this. Good. I want to fade the costume out before I switch to a new costume. I can get rid of the weight now. I'll need to fade the new costume in, too. Fade in will be like this, but in reverse, changing the ghost effect from 100 to 0. Easy enough. I'll duplicate. Start at 100, and change the ghost effect by minus 5, so it goes down to 0. I'll make this a block too. Call it Fade In Costume. OK. Attach the definition. I'll get the Fade In Costume block, run it. The text reappears. The program needs to do this. I'll try it after the switch costume, and I'll run the program. Start could be a little nicer. 
I'll press the space bar. Costume two, space bar. Costume three, one more time, four. Good. Now I want the backdrop to change of the story. I'll go to stage, backdrops. I want backdrop two with my first two costumes and backdrop three with my other two costumes. I'll go back to scripts for the sprite. I could put an if in. If costumes less than three, set backdrop to ocean sunset, else set backdrop to evening above the bay, but that'll be painful adding more and more backdrops. I'll use a list instead. I'll go to data, make a list. I'll call it my backdrop sequence. For this sprite only, okay. I'll move the list over. I want to switch the backdrop before waiting for the key press. Go to looks. Switch backdrop, but which backdrop? I have costume numbers going from one through four. That would match easily as entries in a list. Costume one gets the first entry, costume two the second entry, three the third, and four the fourth. I'll use costume number into the list, duplicate. I need the list, data, item number, item, costume number. I'll need to switch the backdrop for the last costume too, since the last costume won't go into the loop. Duplicate. Delete the rest. The list will have four items, one for each costume. I can use that for the number. Then as the list grows, it'll always work. I need to initialize the list. I'll move this down. Get delete. Delete all. Add item. Another one. Duplicate the two, so I have four. First costume gets backdrop number two. Second is two. Third is three. Fourth is three. The list will get longer for a real story, so I'll create a procedure block. Make a block. Call it initialize list. Okay. I'll attach it. I need to initialize the list. Do that first. Now when the green flag's clicked, the list is initialized, first costume selected. Until switching to the fourth costume, the backdrops change, wait, fade out, new costume fade in. When the loop's finished, the last backdrop shown. I'll run it. The list is right. 2233. Two, three. Costume 1 is showing and backdrop 2 is showing. Costume 1 gets backdrop 2. Space. Costume 2 gets backdrop 2. Space, fade, costume three, gets backdrop three, that was a little strange. One more space, costume four, gets backdrop three. The new backdrops were late. I'll stop it. The fades take time. I want the fade in after the switch backdrop in the loop. Now I'll need a fade in after the loop for this last costume change. When costume number is four, the loop ends, and fade in is needed after the fade out. I'll get fade in, drop it in. I want to watch the program run without the list and without the costume number. I'll run the whole program now. Press space to advance. Nice transition. We enjoyed the last of the sunset. Good. Space. Backdrop headed down to the shore. Good. Now make your own story. That worked nicely. I'm finished with this challenge. I encourage you to play with the program. Get comfortable with how it coordinates costumes and backdrops, and be sure you understand how the list is being used. Try changing the program. Try creating your own story. Try making fade out and fade in take longer, but be careful. Try using a list for costumes too, so that they can be easily resequenced and added, but make sure both lists have the same number of items. Try replacing the use of the key press conditional with a space key event handler and a new variable. Try changing the introduction to be smoother and more interesting. But above all, have fun with the program. In this advanced challenge, I'll create a program to calculate the sum of consecutive numbers using recursion. Carl Friedrich Gauss created a simple equation to do this about 200 years ago. I'll show the equation later to help verify the recursive sum. If a program needs to calculate the sum, it would use this simple equation. 
but this challenge focuses on a simple example to introduce recursion, and recursively summing numbers is about as simple as it gets. First, I'll use a loop to sum all the integer values from 1 to 100. The sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the way up to plus 99 plus 100. I'll need some variables. I'll go to data, make a variable. I'll create my sum for this sprite only. OK. Move it to the center. I want to start with my sum set to 0. I want to make another variable. I'll call it my cur num for this sprite only. OK. Move it to the center. My cur num will have the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, up through 100. I'll initialize it to 1. Change the 0 to 1. I'll make one more variable. Call it my limit for this sprite only. OK. Move it to the center of the stage. I'll initialize it to 100. It's the maximum value to sum. I'll add up the sums by using a loop. Go to Control. I'll use repeat until this time. Go to Operators, Greater Than. Go back to Data. I want to repeat until my cur num is greater than my limit. My cur num will start at 1. I'll need to have my cur num change by 1 each time. I'll change my limit to my cur num. Now my cur num will be incremented up through 100. I need to calculate my sum. My sum starts at 0 have it change my sum by my cur num. Now my sum starts at 0. My cur num is 1, limit set to 100. My sum will be changed by 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Cur num is set to 2. It keeps going because it's not greater than 100. My cur num is 2. 2 is added to the sum. Then 3 is added to the sum. Then 4 and 5 up through 100. When the loop is finished, my sum will be the total. I'll have the cat show the total value. Go to Looks. Say hello for two seconds. I'll go to Operators. Join. I'll change the first part to the total sum is, with a space on the end. And I'll get the variable my sum. My sum. I want this to run when the L key is pressed. Events. When the key is pressed, use the L key. L is for loop. I'll run the program now. Click on the green flag. I'll press the L key. Total sum is 5050. Correct. To help verify the value, I'll use Gauss's formula now. When the G key is pressed, select G. I want to set my sum back to data. Set my sum. I want to set it to my limit times the quantity, my limit plus 1, and all of that divided by 2. I'll go to operators. I'll get plus. Make a copy of my limit. Duplicate. My limit plus 1. Multiply that by my limit. Multiply. Duplicate. Now I have my limit times the quantity, my limit plus 1. All of this needs to be divided by 2. Get division. Put it on the left side. Divide it by 2. Move it into the set command. Now my sum will be set to my limit times the quantity, my limit plus 1, all of this divided by 2. I'll have the cat display this value too. Duplicate. Choosing my sum, it'll display the value. I'll stop the program and run again. But before I run it, what problem could I have? Am I certain that my limit has been initialized? If the program is run, my limit happens to be 100 right now, which was set an earlier run but I want to be certain my limit is 100. I'll go to Events. 
when the green flag is clicked, I'll move my limit set to 100 into when the green flag is clicked. I'll try this now. Stop, green flag. I'll press the G key. Total sum is 50-50, good. I'll press the L key. Total sum is 50-50, working nicely. Now I'm ready for recursion. I'll go to my sketch to help show how recursion works. Recursion solves a problem by calling itself to solve smaller parts of the problem as if each call is another pass through a loop. Here's one way to add one up through a hundred using recursion. The current sum is zero. I'll add one and the current sum will be one. I'll add two and the current sum will be three. I'll add three and the current sum will be six. I'll add four, five, and six all the way through 98 for the current sum of 4,851. I'll add 99 and the current sum will be 4,950. I'll add 100 and the current sum will be 5,050. The next number is 101, which is greater than 100, so it's finished and has a total sum of 5,050. How can I have a procedure block do this? It needs to add the current number to the current sum, and it needs to do it to the remaining numbers, starting with num plus 1. It passes these values to the next call to itself, where the cur sum and num variables in the new call have the larger values. And it calls itself again and again with the newer sum and the next number. This will repeat until num is greater than my limit value, 100. I'll create the cursive sum procedure block with cur sum and num options. Here's the call to a new instance of the recursive sum procedure block. The new copy will have the larger sum and number values. It's very important that it stops calling itself at the right time or it'll continue like a forever loop when it needs to stop. When num is greater than my limit, when it's greater than 100, it won't call itself again. Instead, it'll save the final sum, cur sum, in my sum. The last recursive sum block call finishes, then all the earlier calls finish too. Recursion can get confusing. It's important to get experience with it to understand it. I'll go back to scratch and create the procedure block now. I'll go to more blocks, make a block. I'll call it recursive sum. It'll have two number options. Add two. First one is cur sum. The second one is num. Not going to worry about screen refresh. OK. I'll move the procedure block definition down. I want to start this when the R key is pressed. Go to events. When the R key is pressed, I want to call the procedure block. More blocks. Recursive sum. The first number is the current total. I want to start with a total of 0 and add the numbers starting with 1. I'll need a block and recursive sum to call itself. It'll need to run the next procedure block with cursum plus num and num plus 1. Go to operators, get the plus sign, duplicate. First one will be cursum plus num. Next one will be num plus 1. This is the new total. This is the next number. Now it'll call the next recursive sum block with the new total and the next number. I want to stop recursion when num is greater than 100, my limit. I'll get greater than num. When it's greater than my limit, duplicate. If it's greater than my limit, I want to save the total, else I want to call recursive sum again. Go to Control, if else, if num is greater than my limit, I want to save the limit value, else I want to call recursive sum with the new sum and the next number. If num is greater than my limit, 100, I want to save the total cur sum. Go to Data, Set, want to set my sum to cur sum. When the R key is pressed, cur sum starts at 0 with the number 1. 
num is not greater than limit, so it calls itself with the new sum and the new number, 2. 2 is not greater, so it calls itself with the new sum and 3. Keeps doing this up through 100. Calls again with 101. 101 is greater than my limit of 100. So it saves cur sum into my sum instead of making a recursive call. It's ready to run. Stop. Run. Now I'll press the R key. My sum is correct at 5050, but since the values didn't change, it's not convincing. I'll have my sum be initialized as 0. I'll move it into when the green flag is clicked. Then I can see the new value. Try again. Stop. Green flag. Now my sum is 0. I'll press the R key and my sum has changed to 5050. Good, it's running correctly. I'm finished with this challenge. Recursion is tricky and difficult to understand at first. Recursion is not necessary to have lots of fun and scratch, so don't worry if you don't understand it. I encourage you to work with this challenge, get experience with it, and try to understand recursion. There are situations where recursion is a very natural and elegant solution to naturally recursive problems. Now's your chance to get experience with recursion in this simple scratch environment before working in more demanding programming environments. Try changing the program. Try adding 1 through 100 again, but starting from 100, my limit, down through 1. Be very careful. You may need the red stop sign if the recursive sum procedure block doesn't end correctly. Try changing recursive sum in the L key press handler to add every other number instead of adding every number. For example, they would add 1, 3, 5, and up through 99 instead of 1 through 100. They should get 2,500. Try changing recursive sum in the L key press handler to compute 100 factorial. That's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 up through 100, multiplying instead of adding. They should get about 9.3 times 10 to the 157th. But above all, have fun learning about recursion with the program. I'm glad you could join me. You can review these and all of my challenges at my programmingforkids.info website and on my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. I encourage you to try the things you've just learned and explore the extra challenges I've suggested. I hope you can join me for the other shows. Until next time, have fun being creative.